So the next component that we're actually going to fit uh, is the superheater. This is the superheater and um, in the factory it's silver so this pipe is uh, silver soldered together and as you can see there's a central pipe with a T piece at the end and what and some fixing uh, nuts at both ends. Now the superheater when it's actually in the locomotive fitted correctly you've got the boiler here and actually fits through let me see if you can see that yeah it fits through in the central flue where the um, gas, bron uh, gas burner is so the steam that comes from the top of the boiler goes through several systems and it goes through here it gets superheated before coming here so let me remove this again and then uh, these are the inlet pipes in the cylinders and then um, the idea is that the superheater is fitted onto those inlet pipes so superheated steam then um, enters the cylinders. So what we're going to do now uh, according to the instructions is just, uh, just to get it fitted and as you may see, and I'll, what I'll do, I'll just take one of these nuts off so you can see. And in those nuts, if you can get close enough, hope you can see, there is a, an O-ring to seal off um, the T-fitting with, uh, um, with the inlet uh, with the with the with the intake uh, steam pipe so but if I take both of them off just a second and show you um, you can't put the pipe all the way through I have tried it and if I just show you if I just move this to one side and try and fit the pipe it only goes so far and I just quite haven't got enough room on the other side to fit it. Now, in the instructions, they talk about bending the pipe or something. But I don't think I'm going to do that. What I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to loosen the cylinder screws, the hexagonal screws that are holding the cylinders to the chassis frames. I'll just loose them a bit, then I will think I'll have the space just to be able to slide that on. These uh, these uh, these nuts will have to, and the rings have to slide onto the the inlet pipe first. So I'll just get on with just loosening those uh, cylinders. Then there you see the securing nut, and there's the and the O-ring. But getting the O-ring onto the inlet uh, pipe was extremely difficult. So um, what I actually ended up doing was removing the valve chest again. Put the nut on, feed the ring on, and putting it back on again. So, but the cylinders themselves are still uh, loose. You see, there's a little bit of room there, so I should be able to get the. Um, I should be able to get the superheated T pipe onto and over the inlet pipe. So let's give that a go. Okay, doesn't matter which way up it is, but just try and we'll just feed it onto the wand first. Onto the wand pipe, there it goes, and then see if it's got room to get onto the other one. Yeah, there we go. Get it centrally lined up like that. Okay, I'm going to actually fasten the cylinders up again first and then realign the nuts because I may have to re rebend the exhaust uh, uh, pipes out of the way of the nuts. So let's see if we can get that sorted. Okay, I've read f further along the lines in the instructions and um, one of the ways to see that um, uh, the, cil the cylinders are correctly in line and mounted correctly on the chassis is to pull out 
the piston rod and make sure the piston rod is in direct line with the center of the rear axle. So if I look at that now, I turn that a bit like that, see if I can turn it. Yeah, that looks pretty much, if I turn it a little bit more, that looks in line. Now it's a little bit, it's not in line, it's pointing downwards from, it's now pointing downwards and it needs to be, we need to be in, in line with the central point of the axle. So if I put it like that and it's now just about in line with the center line of the axle so I'm going to tighten it up there. Okay with a lot of messing about I've actually managed to get one nut actually threaded onto the T the T piece. Um, the cylinders are uh, are uh, on the correct place on the chassis now so it's a question of messing about. I've got to uh, bend the uh, outlet outlet pipe uh, the exhaust pipe out of the way a bit as well and the, the same with this side to give to, to make sure there's enough room for the nut to fit onto the onto the t-piece onto the thread so uh, I'm going to continue and, and get uh, and put the other side on just to get the just to get the thread started um, the instructions say that you're uh, just you have to tie it fast enough so that you don't over pinch the o-ring because uh, it's going to seat between the back of the of the nut and the start of the of the thread here so let's see if we can uh, sort that out finally managed to get the second uh, union uh, nut on so uh, the instructions say for now that the um, superheater pipe has to be uh, just vertical so we'll keep it vertical for now and uh, we have to tighten the nuts in such a way that the um, that the soup heater pipe is central so I would say in line with that central um, uh, space bar, chassis base bar uh, uh, tap there so I'm going to adjust it now left and right until I've got it right and then I'll tighten it up ok I've tightened uh, both the union nuts up now there we go and uh, it's get the camera, it's in the middle and Superheater pipe is in the middle and it's pointing straight up. So now we're going to crack on and fit the connecting rods. Now the connecting rods fit between the piston cylinder and the rear axle, the rear, and so they fit on the rear crank pin. If I bring this up to the camera, you perhaps can see that um, the connecting rod is offset. So there is a right and a left. And once again, that is, uh, just like the um, coupling rods, there's two lugs at the top. They must face, they're always upwards. So there is a left and a right. Uh, the other components that we're going to be um, fitting uh, to do with the connecting rod the front, the crosshead, and the crosshead screw. So what happens is he goes, the screw goes through the connecting rod when it's fitted. Connecting rod goes on, and then um, the screw goes into you screw him into uh, the end of the piston rod where the, which is tapped. But I think before doing that, what I'm going to do is get some oil and just just oil up the 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 the, the parts a bit. Put a bit of oil on the front crank pin as well. Okay. So this guy is going to go through here. This one's going to go through here, and then it's going to fit on here like that. There's the crosshead slide, the guide. I don't know what it's called, and then the crosshead the screw, 
and it's going to be fitting once the once the connecting rod's fitted it's all going to be fitted to this piston rod but of course at the back end before the connecting rod goes on there needs to be another 5BA screw added so we'll get a crack on with that and I'll start fitting it and then just get the spanner on it just nip it for the time being because we're going to Of course, you're feeling the resistance of the of the piston now as well. Piston's going back and forward. It's all about whether there's a. That's where it's all. It's all about whether it's binding or not. So we've got both sides on now. Perhaps do a close up there. You can see. Yeah. The cross head, the screw, connecting rod, and there is a another washer in between there between the two. Between the coupling rods and the connecting rod, there's a washer there. There. Uh, before moving on uh, to the next stage, I think what I'm actually going to do is because the pistons are doing quite a lot of backwards and forwards movement because they're now linked to the wheels. Um, I'm actually going to put a few drops of oil uh, via the valve uh, chest. Uh, into the cylinder. Now the oil that I was using for lubricating um, all the points on the motion work was normal um, uh, car oil, just any you know lubricating oil. But what I'm going to be using um, for the internal parts of the uh, cylinder uh, you have to use a uh, special steam oil. You can get the steam oil in small bottles like this from Roundhouse and it's got a viscosity value of 220. Um, but you can also get it from Roundhouse in large um, half litre bottles like this. See it? ESO viscosity 220. So um, I think you know otherwise it's I'm, I'm sure they put some sort of lubrication uh, in the in the cylinder prior to shipping but um, and I'm also going to be messing around you know we're going to be adjusting the valves a bit later and if you look at the valve when we're adjusting the valve it's um, you know it's metal on metal movement and this is actually going to need bedding in later so I think it's better to put a bit of steam oil in there now so I'm just going to put a few drops in there now and perhaps some of it will work its way through to the cylinder. And of course when it's actually running uh, there's actually a steam lubricator as part of the, the steam system and so the, the uh, steam has actually got an amount of steam oil, let's say aerosol of steam oil uh, in amongst it so that will all come in and it just uh, it's sort of self lubricating um, as the uh, as the engine runs but when it's 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 not moving like this and perhaps later if I test it on air um, you know it's always best to have some uh, st some steam steam oil in the system you don't want to really you want to avoid running the cylinders dry if you like without any steam oil that might might induce scarring or whatever so I'm just going to put a drop on both sides actually. So with this side as well, just pull it back. It may may even seem like a lot, but you know if I run it on air first, it will all come good. So there we go. So that's uh, Roundhouse steam oil, um, ESO viscosity two hundred twenty. And I'm sure there's other, uh, you can get the this steam oil at another source, but I like to use the Roundhouse one just to make sure. In all their documentation, they hammer on about the, about using the right uh, steam oil, so that's fine. 